Once upon a time in a land far, far away, all you needed to move a ton of product were a pair of giant, poorly rendered breasts. Seriously, that was it. But this was many years ago, and today the market is saturated with melons, fun bags, gazongas, if you will. Sad to say, but a game actually needs to function properly to sell these days. So Square Enix picked up one of the most well-known franchises on Earth in a last attempt to add a little substance where once there was only bizarre proportions. Did it work? Or is this just another agent of the vast video game patriarchy? Time to check your privilege in our review of Tomb Raider. I remember the first Tomb Raider, and it was known for one thing, besides boobs, raiding tombs. Then Angel of Darkness dropped, and it turned out that the entire series was about Lara Croft wearing tight shirts and ugly sunglasses. The new Tomb Raider finally ditches the gimmicky body shots and adds so much solid gameplay that if it weren't for the protagonist, it would be a completely different game. The exploration mechanics are rock solid, showing a maturity in game design that this series desperately needed. Ranged combat is exhilarating due largely to the underpowered selection of weapons and narrative arc, while the EXP progression system allows for players to focus on styles of play that suit them best without unbalancing the rest of the game. You can hunt animals, forage for plants, and collect treasure, and then you can rotate the model of the treasure to reveal extra historical data and gain more XP. The collectible system is engaging without being too overwhelming. Upgrades have a visible effect on your character and weapons. Without getting too gushy, Tomb Raider is simply the kind of experience that makes you really excited to be a part of it, and does so by being a really clean, fun game with intuitive controls and minimal filler. I know, we were kind of surprised too. Tomb Raider takes place on an ancient Japanese kingdom populated by the cast of Lost. This is one of its greatest strengths, as the ambiance and area design make for a really engaging playground. Think of the entire island as a combination between a giant sandbox and a series of linked maps, but without a lot of the annoying loading screens or invisible barriers holding you back while it renders. One that happens to be gorgeous and macabre in all the right ways. Once you find all the different gears, exploring becomes one of the most addictive qualities of the game, as the background of the island itself is actually really interesting, while the tiered system of relics, GPS caches, audio diaries add more to it than the old standard of some crap I have to find. Tomb Raider also captures the spirit of exploring a new environment by making every area a giant puzzle, constantly challenging you to move forward in a way that makes you feel like you really accomplish something, never handing you any progress without making you earn it first. That was an early hallmark of this series that didn't involve a boob joke, and I'm glad to see it's back and awesome as ever. We've all been dying for a strong female protagonist in a game that doesn't suck. We got Femshep, who is awesome, but at some point we were going to need more than a gender option in a space game as an example of writing a good character. Well, here she is. Lara Croft has no love interest, takes no bullshit, and gives no fucks. She's a total badass who tears a chunk of rebar out of her side in the first 10 minutes of the game, then spends two days of in-game time running around with a bleeding hole in her torso while choking cultists to death with a longbow. Her character development is one of the strongest features of this reboot slash prequel, and while at times it's really obvious that literally every other character is simply a vehicle to show you how much of a winner she is, she's still the coolest kid in the malt shop by a clean mile. Even her design, formerly hot pants and a sleeveless shirt, has been overhauled in an attempt to distance her from the action boob stigma that has lately haunted the series. It works, and it's good to see Lara Croft in a list I never thought I'd see her in. Someone to look up to. But enough of the good, here's the bad. The story itself is a bit cheesy. It starts off great and continues to have really good momentum for the first half of the game, then takes a trip to Crazy Town after it starts revealing the supernatural elements that have been the flag bearer for Tomb Raider anything since 1996. And I'm not talking about the charms made of skulls. At some point, all the side characters take on the persona of an action movie trope, from the obviously going to betray you guy to the surrogate father who will probably die heroically. If you've seen any action movie made since 2005, literally any action movie, you will know how and in what order things happen to which characters and how they will react to it, with Lara being the sole exception to that rule. It's honestly a little off-putting, though thankfully not off-putting enough to affect our enjoyment too much. While ranged combat starts off really exciting, once the weapon upgrades start showing up more often and the game picks up in pace, it degrades to a series of shooting galleries and awkward close quarters combat sections. Close combat is a bizarre series of counter kills and insane reticle movement that reveals what is possibly Tomb Raider's greatest weakness, a spongy enemy AI that mostly absorbs bullets, one which will charge without hesitation into a choke point where 10 other bodies are lying in a big scruffy body pile. Getting close to an enemy also makes aiming extremely uncomfortable and not in an authentic way, 
face since most of the time they'll walk at you really slowly while you shoot them repeatedly in the face. It's hard to figure out where you are in relation to anything, and often leads to a mad scramble backwards while Laura absorbs a half dozen machine gun bullets with her butt. It makes me wonder whether this game was supposed to be more survival action than action action? Which brings up our next point. If Tomb Raider is about raiding tombs, why am I being subjected to downhill sliding sections every 10 minutes, and inverted camera running sections where something is either exploding behind me or crumbling from beneath me? A lot of the action sequences from this game could be from literally any action game, cut and pasted into aggravating one-hit kill muscle memory sections complete with quick time events and time triggers, which would not be a problem if they weren't so overused. I feel like the third-person gallery shooter model is as done as it's ever going to be, and watching Lara fall dramatically while clutching her side in every freaking cutscene is just so gimmicky. But hey, what do we know? It's not like we play video games for a living. Despite its flaws, Tomb Raider has been reborn into a glorious new era where women are respected as equals, and games earn their merit as unique snowflakes upon a vast sea of artistic moving titles. Well, not really, but it's a gorgeous game that also happens to be really fun in all the right ways, and has the added benefit of a strong female lead who will never give you up or let you down. <laughs> Tomb Raider is back, and I'm happy to say we'll be looking forward to the new adventures of Lara Croft. Just try and cut back on the falling next time. We give Tomb Raider an 8 out of 10.